Hey there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2017. I'm here with Keith Cressing from Qualcomm. Keith, great to see you. Great to see you. It looks like you're having a great show here. I know you've got a, quite a great booth going on here and you've got obviously lots to talk about, particularly the Snapdragon 835. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Yes, we're really excited about the 835. Uh, we announced it at uh, CES. Uh, first uh, products in terms of handsets are being announced here at the show at Mobile Congress, but uh, we're really excited about the 835 and we expect a lot of success. So we were just talking earlier about the, the, the unique aspects of the, of the 835. Let's start with the fabrication process, 10 nanometers, that's, that's leading edge. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Yes, yeah, so it's the first product on 10 nanometer. So when I mean first product, I don't just mean mobile. I mean any device in the world, Okay. Uh, 10 nanometer. So 10 nanometer provides uh, what you'd expect in terms of new process technology, better performance, better power, better area. And the things that are of increasing importance in the handset space are physical area and power. So 10 nanometer gave us a power advantage, also allowed us to shrink the package of our chip by about 35%, which allows OEMs to keep the same physical parameters of their phone, but yet put in uh, more functionality or larger batteries. That was the, I was talking to somebody earlier, that the surface area in terms of silicon cost, fabrication cost, is actually a, a large part of the, of the overall pricing of these things. So reducing that is, is very important in terms of the economics. Yes, certainly, uh, yes. Um, we couldn't produce the same chip if we were in the previous generation process. So it's important for us to get that smaller package, get that lower power, while at the same time improving the functionality substantially. Well, that, that's a great point. You couldn't produce the same chip on a, on a greater. So even at 14 nanometers, you had to go to 10 to make the 835 the chip that it's going to be. That's absolutely right. Yeah, all of the, the cores that are integrated in our Qualcomm design cores, and uh, we design the cores in parallel with the process. So we design them all specifically for 10 nanometer. So let's just talk about the cores for a moment. I know these have got the Cryo 280 cores in them, and this is the first time you're doing the built-on Cortex technology with uh, ARM. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. So, so there's there's different uh, CPU types. One, you can just use the exact same uh, CPU from ARM. One, you can take an architectural license and design your own from the ground. Uh, grounds up. This is a different program we partnered with ARM, so uh, it's built on Cortex technology, and uh, it's uh, it's similar to, to what you get from ARM, but there's been some modifications, including the implementations that uh, are designed specifically for the Qualcomm chip. I, I won't ask about the secret source, but we're all it's it's, a, it's we'd love to know, but I know you're not going to tell us. But that that that's great that you you've got it. It is a custom core in the sense that you've had a major input into how that's been customized, isn't it? Well, yeah, especially on the implementation side. So from a, from a core design, there's, the fundamentals are mostly from ARM. But in terms of implementation, it's ours. And the key too is we want to make sure uh, we don't look at the IPs discreetly. We want to make sure we look at things from an SLC system perspective that works well with our chosen buses, works well with our cache structures, interfaces well to our GPU, DSP, because as you know, uh, especially for mobile, um, life is a lot more than the CPU. And more and more of the applications are actually moving from the CPU to the other cores because uh, uh, customers want to get the best power performance they can. So as time progresses, they're moving to more specialty cores. I must say, I've noticed that in your presentation, you deliver the 835 as an overall solution. In from camera, DSP, graphics, you're not just saying, hey, we've got this core. It's the overall solution that gives you that great experience on mobile as a whole package. Yes, for example, if we go to customers, obviously the connectivity is key, um, camera is key, uh, camera pre and post processing, audio processing, video processing, uh, machine learning, um, many of these things are done on, on whether it be the GPU or our uh, industry leading DSP. And that really also reflects the changing face of the mobile market. I mean, we weren't talking two years about years ago about AI and VR and AR, and here we are today saying, hey, our chips are built to take into account those new experiences that we're having. Yeah, that's right. And many of these new experiences, I mean, you know what the algorithms are. You know their specific scale or vector processing. Uh, you know, for example, uh, some of these uh, machine learning algorithms provide uh, certain levels of uh, multiply and accumulate functions. Those functions are best done in the DSP. And that's one of the reasons our DSP, we added vector extensions. So we can perform a lot of advanced mathematics uh, with as low power as negative as possible. 
doing it in the hardware, not in the software. Yeah, yeah, not in the generic processor. So the generic processor is great for you know application loading or running some of the physics and some of the games. Obviously, the GPU is important for running the games and graphics. But then the DSP is where a lot of the uh, algorithms come in for camera pre and post processing, for audio processing, for sensor processing, and for machine learning. Uh, for example, if you compare the uh, CPU in the 835, which is a great CPU, but you compare the CPU versus the DSP, it's about 25 times more efficient on running many of these algorithms. And of course, DSP is really does not really the right name now, is it? It's so much more complicated piece yeah. of hardware than, than maybe its origin is. It's, you know. it's really yeah, yeah. That's really a good point. So so DSP is kind of a historical name. Um, you'll see more and more some of the uh, others are calling things, you know, vision processors or you know, a multitude of different names. Um, but the fact is that the DSP is kind of the underlying functionality. We've added extensions to it. And with those extensions, uh, specifically designed to manipulate pixels for images or, uh, or sound, or the machine learning and artificial intelligence. So, for example, with the uh, 835, is the first time we support TensorFlow. So if someone uh, designs a machine learning algorithm on TensorFlow, uh, we have a software stack that efficiently distributes that load across our cores. And if the D DSP is free, that then is the most efficient core to process that TensorFlow algorithm. And uh, it's really important. So the days of true heterogeneous computing are, are coming, or maybe uh, they're upon us. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely here. Right. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, uh, we have about a 25% power advantage on the 835 versus the 820. Part of that's the node, but part of that also is the heterogeneous processing and the software that's all involved. So if someone's trying to run image recognition or facial recognition or uh, advanced always listening processing for audio, that that can be done uh, uh, in a low power envelope and increase our days of use. So it's really hard to make things much more capable and improve battery life, but we've done that with the 835 and a lot of that is because of the heterogeneous computing that you mentioned. Now you mentioned the, the GPU for Especially for consumers, that's all often a big ticket item. Do you want to tell me a bit about the, the GPU in the 835? Yeah, so so we uh, advanced the GPU by about 30% in terms of capability from the previous generation. It's the same family, um, but every we typically come out with a new family about every two years. You know, Adrenal 3, Adrenal 4, Adrenal 5. This is in the Adrenal 5 family. Um, but then the second year that we come out with the same architecture, we find out ways to optimize it. And so we've improved it roughly 30%. Um, we're really pleased with our GPU because not only is the performance great, but the power is great. So if you go out and you run a Manhattan benchmark or something, or pick, pick your own graphics benchmark, you can measure the frame rate. We have a, you know, either a on par or leading frame rate across the best in the industry. But then when you measure the power, mm -hmm. it's significantly better than anyone else. Uh, and we have a pretty strong graphics team internally, and uh, that's one of the things that makes the 835 great. Uh, and uh, really, power and performance are this is a balancing act, isn't it, between these two things? You've got battery, but yet we want great frame rate, we want great processing speed. That's right. We, we actually are, um, even though peak performance matters, um, I'd say it matters a lot more historically. Mm -hmm. Much more now, the focus is on sustained performance. And that's because of the use case. For example, let's say you, you slot in this for Daydream or you know, Gear VR, etc. Um, for the VR experience, you, want, you don't want to lose frame rates after you've played the game for 10 minutes or something. You don't want it to overheat. And so peak performance going idle is a use case that maybe uh, mattered more in the past than it does in the present. In the present, what cust end customers want is to be able to run their game, whether you're using the handset or uh, uh, they're using something like Pokemon Go for AR or they have it in a virtual reality mode, to have equal sustained performance from the time they first use it till they're done. And because of that, um, it's performance at power is the critical benchmark. Absolutely. Well, it's been absolutely great speaking to you. Uh, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. We're here at Mobile World Congress. Stay tuned for more news and interviews during this week. Thank you. Thank you.